In this video, I'm going to be talking about energy bar graphs and calculations. If we focus on our question over here, it says a 30 kilogram student stretches a trampoline 1.3 meters and jumps upward. What is the student's maximum height? So the first thing we're going to focus on is the conceptual part of the problem and focusing on the system and these different bar graphs. So with any physics um, calculation, you want to make sure you're really focused on the conceptual portion first and then the mathematical part will typically come last. So what we're going to do is we're going to first label the system. So the system of all the main things involved would include the student the earth and the trampoline. So those are the things that I'm placing in my system that matter and that are the most relevant in this problem. You may be asking yourself why the earth is involved. The earth is involved because it's the thing that's providing the gravitational field and giving the person that gravitational potential energy. So typically the earth is involved with your system. So considering that's my system, I want to ask myself a series of questions to fill out my bar graphs. For kinetic energy, we're going to ask, are they moving? If so, how fast? For gravitational potential energy, we're going to answer, are they off the ground? If so, how much? And for gravitational, or excuse me, elastic potential energy, is something compressed or stretched? And if so, how much? So what we're going to do is we are going to put some bars on our initial conditions and final conditions to see what types of energy we have before we start using the formulas in this box right here. So I filled out my bar graphs. So in the very beginning, my initial conditions would be when the student stretches the trampoline down to its maximum stretch. In that case, the instantaneous velocity is zero. So therefore, there's no kinetic energy to start off with. And do they have some height off the ground? They're probably slightly off the ground, but because that's the lowest point of the problem, you can consider that to be no potential energy. And then is something compressed or stretched? The trampoline is definitely stretched to its maximum point. Therefore, all of our energy is in the form of elastic potential energy. Now, taking a look at our system, the system is our student earth and trampoline. So all of the energy we're dealing with has to do with the student earth and trampoline. There's no other outside object that's increasing or decreasing the amount of energy we currently have. So we'll say no work is being done. If there was energy being added or subtracted by some other outside object, then we'd have an arrow pointing out or an arrow pointing in to show that there's energy being pumped into the system or taken out of the system. For our final conditions, now the person has jumped up to their maximum height. So at their maximum height, their instantaneous velocity is zero. So again, we have no kinetic energy and we're at their highest point. Of course, they're off the ground. That's where they have their maximum height. So we're gonna make this bar go all the way up. And then for our elastic potential energy is something compressed or stretched. The trampoline is no longer stretched or compressed. So all of our energy is in the form of potential um, energy, um, specifically gravitational potential energy. So now that we have our bar graph set up, that's going to help us set up what we're going to do mathematically. So because of the conservation of energy, we know that energy is not created or destroyed. So we have the sum of all of our three types of energy initially, which would be equivalent to the sum of all of our types of energy at the very end.
Okay, so this is the strategy you can use for all types of problems. For this specific one, we don't need these two on this side and we don't need these two on this side. So all we're gonna do now is take these two types of energy, expand it out into their formulas, plug in everything we know, and then in the end, we wanna solve for the maximum height. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in those numbers and do that. All right, so I went ahead and plugged in all the variables that I know. So the formula for elastic potential energy is one half kx squared. We got our k value in the problem. We got our amount of stretch from the equilibrium position to be placed here for the x. And then on the right side, we have our mass of 30 kilograms, our g value, which is a constant 9.8. And then our height is our unknown. So I went ahead and plugged in all of my numbers. The product of these numbers over here is 760.5. The product of 30 times 9.8 is 294. So I went ahead and divided both sides by 294 to get my final answer of 2.59 meters. All right, so to recap on what we did, we made sure we set our system of all the main things that are involved in the problem and place that in that center circle. Then for our initial and final conditions, really think about what's happening in your initial conditions and then ask yourself these series of questions so that you can accurately make your bar graph for the initial conditions. Same thing for the final conditions, you focus on what's happening at the final part of the problem. Again, ask yourself these series of questions again, make your bar graph for your final conditions, and then that will lead you what to do mathematically. So once you set up basically the law of conservation of energy, where energy is constant for this system, you can go ahead and cross out things that are zero, leave the types of energy that are still present and then expand them out into their formulas. And then from there, once you plug in your numbers, you should be able to solve for your unknown variable. And that concludes how to use the energy calculations to solve for a variable and how to do energy bar graphs. Thank you for watching and listening.